Montevecchia pyramids covered by soil, one, two, three. The same layout like Mexican pyramids, Italian or Giza pyramids. They are saying three stars of the Orion belt, maybe. Even though the better fit are the three stars of the star constellation of Cygnus. Gunung Padang, Western Java, Indonesia. Dr. Danny Hillman discovered the pyramid there, four-sided in the jungle completely. Originally, it looked like this, with a total of four cultural layers until the Buddhist temples 2,000 years back. Korea, step pyramids. Australia, the Gimpy Pyramid, shaped hill, four triangular faces with the megaliths on top, megaliths on four sides, showing the cardinal points. It was there until last year. And then the government of Australia destroyed it, so they laid a new highway there. Local aborigines tried to protect it unsuccessfully. Pyramids in Israel, they don't teach us about them. Step pyramid. Now, it seems that we need to establish the set of scientific criteria to call something a pyramid. The first criteria should be the geometry. If you want to call something a pyramid, it has to have geometry of the four-sided pyramid. This right here is geometry of the pyramid. Here's one side to the left, second, to the right, third, in the back, the fourth. Here is one triangular face. Here is the second, that is the third, and the fourth. From here, we can see three corners. One, two, three, the fourth in the back. The same slope from bottom to the top. This is the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun that I rediscovered back in 2005. At that time, I used to live in the U.S., in Houston. I went to visit the local museum, and then I saw this. It was so obvious. After I've investigated pyramids around the planet, especially Mayan pyramids, I knew that most of them are covered by soil, by grass, by bushes, by forests. And this was a perfect example. I took a compass, and compass showed me that this side is perfectly oriented to the north, the one in the back, south, east, and west. I was doing some preliminary research, getting permission as the physical person, individual. Everything I did, anomalies. I wrote the book, and I, I announced the news to the world in October of 2005 that the first pyramids in Europe have been discovered. I named this one the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. In the last 17 years, this has become the most active archaeological site in the world. Every year we have hundreds of volunteers helping us to dig, to research, to scientifically measure. Through our non-profit, non-government foundation called Archaeological Park Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun Foundation, we don't receive a penny from the government and still the most active site. The second element for the pyramids is the artificial construction material. In Peru, adobe bricks. In Mexico, sandstone and granite. In Guatemala, volcanic stone. In Egypt, limestone and granite. In Bosnia, everywhere we dig, we are finding construction material. Just three feet below the layer of soil, we have a structure. If, here, three feet soil, rectangular blocks, first, second, third, and then second row of blocks, third row, the fourth row, one, two, three, four, this is a structure. We took samples, analyzed them, and we got the answer that it was artificially made concrete better hardness, better durability than our concretes today in 21st century. We've uncovered big areas, concrete everywhere, but as a binder, they did not use cement like we are using today. 
but melted clay. This brownish material, clay, pebbles, rocks, and sand. They mix them together. Bottom left is the pyramid that how it looks like today. And here in the big illustration, we just replace the green color with this brownish, grayish color of concrete. And this is how the pyramid looked like originally. Element number three for the pyramids, orientation of the sides. Chinese pyramids oriented to the north. Egyptian, north. Peruvian, north. Cahokia, north. Indonesia, Cambodia, north, 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 north. Well, the Great Pyramid of Egypt has an error from the perfect cosmic north, zero degrees, three minutes. Kafre, zero degrees, three minutes. Mykerinos Pyramid, zero degrees, 18 minutes. Bosnian Pyramid, zero degrees, zero minutes and 12 seconds. The most precise on the planet. Element number four, inner chambers, passageways. The lines show different depth passages. For example, white color, white, 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 10 meters or 35 feet deep. Blue color, 130 feet under the ground. Yellow, 500 feet deep. Element number five, underground tunnels. Under the Giza Plateau in Egypt, four levels of tunnels, not open to the public. Why? Because the tunnels, they are obviously associated with the pyramids, but they are much older than 4,500 years. They are older than 12,000. For me, they are probably between 30 and 40,000 years old. And that's the reason why Egyptologists do not want to open them for the public. In the case of Bosnian pyramids, the network that we discovered here, and we discovered six entrances at different spots. So far, we cleared two miles of prehistorical underground tunnels. And we have a total of 60 miles at different levels. Huge discovery. Element number six, water. We have two major rivers. One, two, River Fojnica, River Bosna. From here, it flows as the River Bosna, the largest Bosnian river. But if we go back with River Fojnica, there is a town called Fojnica. When the ancient Roman came, and they would document everything, they said there were gold mines in this town of Fojnica. Gold, always important element. Not for the same reason like we have it today. Gold bars, the central banks or the Fed, or, you know, nice golden stuff that we can use. They would heat the gold up at 850 degrees, getting it as a white powder, monoatomic gold. It is said that this powder can improve the atmosphere, clean it, or human molecular structure, give us prolonged life. It seems this is the reason why gold has always been valued so high. They tell us one thing, but behind the scene, they use it for something else. Element number seven, sacred, holy geometry. What is sacred geometry? Elements are, Equilateral triangle, hexagon, number pi, 3.14. Golden section, 1.618. These are very important numbers and very important geometrical shapes. For example, three points in the place. You can connect in unlimited number of ways, but only one gives you equilateral triangle. The same length of the sides and inner angles at 60 degrees. And guess what? Three major pyramids in Bosnia, the Pyramid of the Sun, this one right here. When we connect the pyramid from the top to the top of the Moon Pyramid in Bosnia, 2,180 meters, 
from the moon to dragon, 2180, from dragon back to the sun, 2180. Equilateral triangle. Mother Nature does not make hills with four sides, perfect orientation, triangular faces, concrete. And that structure to put in the relation of equilateral triangle with other two structures. It is the result of the intelligent design. So green line is connecting the top of the sun, moon, dragon. The red line, top of the love pyramid, temple of Mother Earth, entrance to the tunnels and the river Fornitsa. Triangle within a triangle, sacred geometry. The top of the temple of Mother Earth, love pyramid, sun pyramid, unnamed structure, entrance to the tunnels, laser straight line. This is missing. That's okay. The red connects top of the sun, moon, dragon. And the middle point from here, when we draw circles, we are getting so called seed of life, also, element of sacred geometry. The next feature for the pyramids are the astronomical properties. Since the ancients were always looking at the sky, following the movement of the sun and the moon and some other planets and some major star constellations. Let's see what's happening in our case. Standing on the top of the Bosnian pyramid of the sun, we are watching the movement of the shadow of the sun pyramid. The date is June 21st, the summer solstice. Just before the sunset, the shadow makes a pyramid next to the western triangular slope of the Bosnian pyramid of the moon. The height of the shadow the same as the height of the moon pyramid. The shadow touches the foundation of the moon pyramid. It is like we are looking them in the mirror. Mid of August, the hottest days. To the left is the shadow of the Sun Pyramid, western slope of the Moon Pyramid, and to the right, the sunset, the shadow, just before the sunset, completely covers the Moon Pyramid. Top of the shadow touches the top of the Moon Pyramid. In symbolical way, the message of the builders is, the rule of the day and the sun is over, and the rule of the night and the moon starts. The third very important day, the fall equinox, September 23rd. The length of the day equals the length of the night. Spring and fall equinox. So, September 23rd, here's the moon pyramid, the western side. Here's the shadow of the sun, and here's the shadow of the love pyramid. So we have another player. Sun to the left, love just below the moon pyramid, and at the sunset, the shadow of the love pyramid completely covers the moon pyramid. You see how they are playing? I mean, Probably they built first the Sun Pyramid, and based on the movement of the shadow, they said, okay, this will be the location of the Moon Pyramid, and based on the height of the shadow, they said, this will be the height of the Moon Pyramid. And then when they placed the Love Pyramid, they did more calculations, so this pyramid can come into the place. Amazing. I mean, these are not small structures. The Sun Pyramid is two and a half times higher and the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Five Bosnian pyramids, and we lay them on the astronomical map, where the seven stars of Pleiades are located. Five of them matches the locations of the five out of seven stars of Pleiades. They call them seven sisters of Pleiades. 
And we find in oral traditions of Navajo, of Comanche, of Anasazis, of Pueblo, of Hopis, of Mayas, all the way to India, to the real India, in real, real Indians, we find the stories about the Pleiades. Has to be a big reason why everybody mentioned them. Element number nine, energy potent place. Below the sun pyramid, we have a huge iron plate. Iron generates electromagnetic field. The pyramid pulls this field, amplifying it. How do we know that? Because we have measured at the base, at the top. At the top, the signal of electromagnetism is 50 times stronger. Element 10, volcanic lines. We are the first one in the world analyzing this aspect. Many volcanoes on the planet. What's happening below the ground? We don't know. Where is the lava? Lava means iron, minerals, energy. After we have we've analyzed 75 megalithic and pyramid sites around the world, we've concluded that they are all located above intersections of several volcanic lines. What is volcanic line? You have two volcanoes, you connect them, it is volcanic line. You extend this line, at the end, you place a pyramid, pyramid is sitting on one volcanic line. But, for example, Cholula pyramid in the state of Puebla in Mexico, the largest Mexican pyramid is sitting on intersections of 18 volcanic lines. Gunung Padang, Indonesia, 28,500 years old pyramid is sitting on intersection of 17 volcanic lines. The famous Machu Picchu, eastern Peru, 16 volcanic lines. Easter Island, 10 volcanic lines. Bosnian pyramids, they are below, somewhere here probably, they are sitting on intersection of 26 volcanic lines. 16 out of 26 are connecting three volcanoes, four volcanoes, or five volcanoes. Volcanoes, energy, pyramids above. The next element, ley lines. Those of you who know a little bit about uh, English monuments, they know that they coined this term ley lines. On perfectly straight lines, Today, we have many churches and cathedrals. For example, the most famous is St. Michael's ley line. Before the churches were built, it's not like in the US. You come, you build a church. Over there, the churches were built on the places of the older temples. And the older temples, before they got destroyed, they were built on the places of all the panic temples. And they were built on the places of all the megalithic structures. Why? Because somebody knew that there was a good energy potent place below. And those structures, they amplify the energies. So they are called ley lines. The red lines here on this map, red lines, they represent ley lines. They are underground energy lines. Usually they go east-west, east-west, north-south, but also they run diagonally. You see how the majority of those ley lines meet right here, on this bigger map, right here. To the right is the capital city of Bosnia called Sarajevo, Sarajevo. But here is the real, the, the most powerful place. And this is the town of Visoko, and this is exactly where the Bosnian pyramids are located. Who had the eyes to see what's underneath. Element number 12, energy phenomena. Thanks to late Dr. Harry Oldfield from UK, who developed the first PIP camera, today's new energy vision camera, we are able to see those bioenergy fields. This here is pointy natural hill in Bosnia. Look at those bioenergy fields, those fields above. We have green, we have yellow, we have red, we have blue, we have red, we have green. They are all horizontal. This is the village in Serbia. 
horizontal binary fields, green and red and green and blue and red and green. This is a beautiful red rock location seen in Sedona. This is a bell rock, looks like a step pyramid. Look at those lines behind it, all horizontal. Whenever you have a natural ambient, including the cities, mountains, valleys, rivers, cities, always horizontal. This is road when I take my groups to Egypt, road from Aswan to Abu Simbel. See those lines? Horizontal. This is the southern Germany. My German friends claim that this is a pyramid. However, we can see horizontal lines. I'll tell you why that's important. And this is the Bosnian pyramid of the sun. Vertical lines. Vertical, vertical, vertical. 2015. The panoramic view. Town of Visoko to the right. Buildings, horizontal lines. You are coming to the pyramid. You have vertical lines. 2016, the same thing. What's happening inside the red color? Energy is getting accumulated inside the pyramid, going through the top, hitting those horizontal fields, they become vertical. So as early as 2007, we knew that Bosnian pyramids had something to do with the energies. They were getting the energies out through the top of the pyramid. Energy machines. And that's exactly what we need a new definition of the pyramids. Let's forget the bedtime stories about Egyptian pyramids being tombs for the pharaohs. And let's use the science. The pyramids are energy amplifiers. The pyramids are shortly and simply energy machines. That is the purpose of pyramids. What we can use this energy for? We had teams of engineers, electrical engineers, sound engineers, telecommunication engineers, physicists who were coming with their equipment. This is the Croatian team. Measuring, concluding that from the top of the pyramid of the sun, moon, dragon, love, tumulus, we have energy beams going up at a 28 kilohertz frequency. Then the teams from Serbia, engineer Marjanovic, he brought his equipment and he confirmed this frequency, 28 kilohertz. These are his instruments here. The teams from Finland, Italy, they all got the same results. When in science, you have five international teams who come at five different times, who bring their own equipment, and they all get the same results. It is called the international scientific verification of the phenomenon. Which phenomenon? This right here. Energy beam going through the top of the pyramid, 28 kilohertz frequency. It is about 13 feet radius. It is continuous because we measure it in summer, fall, winter, spring. It's always there. Mother Nature does not make hills with four sides, concrete blocks, passageways, underground tunnels, perfect orientation, and this energy beam. We measure it on the other natural hills, no energy beam. And then we measure, when we have constellation of our planets and our stars. For example, a very important event happened July 27, 2018. It was called the total moon eclipse. We wanted to see what, what's going to happen when we have Sun and Earth and the Moon and Mars on the same line, Jupiter, just a little bit off. We measure this energy beam during the daytime before the moon eclipse and we measure it during the moon eclipse from 9.15 p.m. until 10.30 p.m. This is how the moon looked like. And we concluded that the electrical field was two times stronger during the moon's eclipse. You see how we are not alone. There is this exchange of the energy with the other stars and the planets. And then we measure the strength of the signal at the base of the top of the pyramid, 10 feet higher, another 10 feet higher, somewhere here on the roof. 
And we concluded every time we lift this antenna, sonda, the signal is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. It is not very logical. What, would you, what you would expect is that there is a source of the energy either inside the pyramid or below the pyramid. And if we move away, the signal should be getting weaker and weaker. But since everything is upside down in Bosnia, our pyramid works differently. The signal is getting stronger and stronger. In science, this phenomenon is called scalar waves. The brilliant mind of Nikola Tesla in 1899 in his lab Colorado, in Colorado Springs, he was working with subtle energies and he realized that there is some other force, not only electromagnetic field. He called it scalar waves. In the last 50 years, the Russian physicists, they've been working on it and they concluded that the speed of scalar waves is quicker than the speed of light. They've been teaching us from 100 years back, Albert Einstein hypothesis, the largest speed in the universe is the speed of light. However, the speed of scalar waves much, much quicker. So our conclusion, the first potential purpose of Bosnian pyramid energy is to be the communication device. 28 kilohertz, important frequency. When Nikola Tesla built Waldencliffe Tower in the state of New York, he did a few experiments, and then he was writing in his diary, I found a way to move huge quantities of energy, thousands of horsepowers, from one planet to another, regardless of their distance, and the frequency he was using, 28 kilohertz. It's not only the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun that's been energetically active. The Kukukan Pyramid, Chichen Itza, Mexico, the tourist from El Salvador was filming his family, his two daughters, and he filmed just before the storm, energy beam going through the top of the pyramid. The Pyramid of the Moon in Teotihuacan, energy beam. So there are more active pyramids. Uh, I guess I'll go real quick through this. I won't even mention the bad stuff. Let's talk about the age. The Sun Pyramid in Bosnia is covered by soil. We have analyzed the soil. It is between 12 and 15,000 years old. If the soil is 12 or 15,000 years old, it means the structure below is even older. And then we discovered organic material fossilized leaves between two concrete layers. We did a radiocarbon dating analysis, the age 29,200 years plus minus 40 years. So we go back for 30,000 years. So Montana megaliths are not alone. Tens of thousands of years. What was happening then, according to our Archaeologists and historians, nothing. That's the era of the primitive caveman. Really. On the bottom of the Pacific floor, 250 feet below the sea level, Pacific, those megalithic structures were discovered. They are called Yonaguni monuments. 13 underwater cities connected with 250 miles of the white stone roads on the bottom of the Pacific floor. When the first photos of those megaliths, those half circular structures, came to the Japanese newspapers, Japanese archaeologists were saying, this is all natural. The sea streams made those stairs. Why they were saying that? Well, the people will start asking questions. When this was built, it's on the bottom of the ocean floor. Nobody built stuff on the bottom of the oceans or seas. At one point, this was a surface. When? During the Ice Age. Because ice kept a lot of water 
in those ice layers, reaching 3,000, 5,000, 8,000 feet. But when ice melted, huge quantities of water went to the world seas and oceans. Pacific went up for 250 feet, and those cities were destroyed and forgotten. Baalbek, Lebanon. This block, when I visited it, was the largest over there. 1,250 tons. Until the year 2000, until 20 years back, we did not have cranes with that capacity. So somebody was more advanced than us. In the meantime, the German archaeologists continued digging. They discovered the one which is 1,650 tons. Who moved that? Gobekli Tepe, southeastern Turkey. Dr. Klaus Smith from Germany discovered three stone circles with those T-shaped megaliths, probably looking like this originally. When I spoke to him, he told me that there are at least 100 of them. He passed away eight years back, and the Turkish government continued. They discovered six more, 100 megalithic circles. And during the archaeological excavation, they did not find a traces of one residential house. They teach us in school that you have to have big cities of 50, 100,000 people, so they start building temples. Where are the people who build them? For what purpose? Tunnels in Bosnia. This is how they look like today. Huge network. Original look, original design. This is very stable. A lot of dry walls. Somebody was closing those tunnels. A lot of blocks like this one here. We call it Mega Ceramic Block K2. Sitting on support. Somebody placed it here. We took samples, analyzed using very sophisticated analysis at the Institute for Atomic Physics, and conclusion was this was artificial ceramic material. The mass, eight tons, 18,000 pounds. We used georadar, which shows us that inside this block there are three pieces of quartz crystal. Quartz crystal amplifies, transforms the energy. In the analysis, with a lot of dark blue areas, is telling us the high frequency. High frequency, very good to relax, to meditate, to calm your mind, to do astral projections. People come, open their hands, they feel the energy. It's not a physical sense, feeling the energy. It's another sense. Let's call it spiritual sense. In another block, K1, a lot of red. Red meaning low frequency. Low frequency goes through our body, affecting our blood circulation in very beneficial way. Blood flows better. We are healthier. And then we started receiving healing testimonials from the tunnel visitors. This woman from Slovakia, 17 year old, she had very low lung capacity. To the right is an x-ray showing that she was using only 47% of her lung. You know, surface breathing. <laughs> Three years trying different therapies, nothing was helping her. She came to visit Bosnian Pyramid Tunnels. She stayed for 10 days, one hour in the morning, one in the evening, morning, evening. After 10 days, her lung capacity went up to 84%. Team from Prague, Czech Republic, six of them, medical nurse, they were checking different stuff like uh, blood pressure, sugar, you see the drop of blood. The guys had, in Europe we count it differently, the guy had 7.8. In Europe, three to six, normal level, six to 10, risky group, above 10, diabetes. The guy was in the risky group. After one hour in the tunnel, it dropped to 5.1. The other guy, Karel, before the tunnels, 10.5, almost diabetes, he came back, 5.7. Or 
or even more extreme cases. Two subjects, 20 and 22, diabetes. The first visit, the second visit. The blue, the second guy, the first visit, the second visit, dropped to five, basically dropped to the normal level. There is no medicine that can reduce your sugar for so much. This woman from Turkey, she used to have very high blood pressure, reaching 220 over 135. Can you imagine migraines? The last six, seven years, she's been coming to Bosnian Pyramid Tunnels twice a year, and her blood pressure never goes higher than 140 over 90. And this is the picture of our auric field. This is a technology developed by a brilliant Russian scientist, Professor Korotko. This is the person to the left before entering the tunnels. You see this continuation in her bioenergy field. Why? Because of the stress that we live in. Her energy level, 23 joules. Her balance, 89%. One hour in the tunnels, look at her auric field, beautiful. Energy went from 23 to 58 joules, balance from 89 to 100. According to the Eastern traditions, we are not only physical, but also energetic bodies. Energy flows. The places where most of the energy flows and intersect are called chakras. Seven chakras. To the left is the person who had the measurement before entering the tunnels. If you are on this straight line, it means that you are perfectly balanced. I must admit that this person is almost perfectly balanced. In the last seven years, we have checked 5,200 people before entering the tunnels after coming back. And we've noticed that in more than 90% of the cases, we have improvement of all those parameters. The only problem that I see with this person to the left is that those chakras are rather close. They could be open more. And that's exactly what happened after she visited the tunnels. You see those circles? They are much bigger, three times bigger than before entering the tunnels. We were checking the blood. Italian professor was doing, was doing live blood analysis before and after the tunnels. This is the blood after the tunnels, red blood cells, those white dots are white dot cells. They are perfectly shaped. When you have a nice circle, your blood is good. When it's not one on top of each other, like here, your blood is real good. When you have enough space for the white blood cells to attack the enemies, the toxins, your blood is good. By the way, this is my blood after visiting the tunnels. <laughs> now, there is one thing that uh, today we don't care in the 21st century. It's called the geopathogenic radiations. If we have underground water flow below our bedroom, in three, four, five years we get sick. We don't know why. Bad energy from underground water. Then there are some energy lines called Hartmann lines. The places where they intersect are called Hartmann intersections. If you sleep or stay longer above Hartmann intersection, bad energy. Curry's intersection, diagonal. Schneider's intersection, a lot of energy is under the ground and we, we know almost nothing about that. Well, in the tunnels, there are no underground harmful radiations on these geopathogenic radiations. We measured another energy phenomenon using this very sophisticated equipment. We measure extremely low frequencies. This is between 0 and 10 hertz. Here it is at 7.83 hertz. In science, it is called the original Schumann resonance. Everything resonates. Our bodies resonate. Our planet resonates. Nikola Tesla, 125 years ago, thought it was 8 hertz. Austrian von Schumann measured 50 years ago 7.83. We are born at 7.83. When we think, 
if there are enough of us who still think. When we think, we, we generate brain waves, 7.83 hertz. As long as we are at the same frequency like our planet, we are in balance, unfortunately, due to the huge qualities of our bad technology. TVs, computers, laptops, tablets, cell phones, microwaves, energy grid, especially cities are becoming so contaminated with this bad electromagnetism. And the frequencies in those places is not 7.83 anymore. It's not even 10. It used to be 10, 20 years ago. Now it's going like Munich, 15, New York, 18 hertz. It's not a big difference, but it is a difference. Our body cells feel this difference, and now we have disbalance, resulting in stress. We are in a stressful environment, if you live in the city, 24 hours a day. And guess what? Bosnian Pyramid Tunnels, Bosnian Pyramids, 7.83. Balance. The next important element in the tunnels, negative ions. We have instruments to measure negative ions. This is some extra electrons in molecules. They are negatively charged in the atmosphere. They connect with the dust, become heavy, they drop to the floor. Negative ions are good. They clear the atmosphere. They clear it from EM smoke. They clear it from the pollen, pollen, allergies, spring, summer. They clear it from the microbes. And microbes are viruses, bacteria, fungi. Viruses. If coronavirus is a virus, then they clear it from corona. More negative ions, it's bad. In our homes, our offices, very low concentrations, 20, 30, 50, even zero. We go outside to the downtowns, 100, 150, it's a little bit fresher. We go to the mountains, 500, 1,000. You go to the Bosnian Pyramid Tunnels, between 20,000 and 100,000. So, we can see that more and more elements are telling us that this underground space is perfectly protected. We live on the surface of the planet. A lot of cosmic radiation is coming our way. Some of them are harmful. They attack our body, and our body cells fight those enemies. You go to the tunnels, 100 feet below the ground, no harmful cosmic radiations. Natural radioactivity coming from underground. Sometimes we walk the streets, we don't even know that this radioactivity is attacking our body. So now, our body cells, they attack the enemies from above, they, not God, <laughs> cosmic radiations. They attack enemies from below. Well, we use these instruments, Geiger, Miller counters, to measure radioactivity in the tunnels 100 times lower than the minimum allowed. No enemies. One of the biggest enemies today, the cell phones. The person to the left with the nice, light, bright colors, not using cell phones. The person to the right, see the red color, after 10, 15 minutes of using cell phones. And we know that. You keep the cell phone in your hand, after 15 minutes of talking, your hand is becoming warm. The cell phone is becoming warm. Your ear is becoming hot. But the biggest problem is, in 15 minutes, 100,000 brain cells are gone. Because of the frequency. They are burned. So if you have to talk on the cell phone, and we all have to, then use the speakers. Of course, everybody will hear what you're talking about, and it's not pleasant, especially if you are in the presence of your wife and your girlfriend or your <laughs> mistress is calling you, but health first. In the tunnels, no signal for the cell phone. 
Here we have it, meaning we are exposed right now. And the biggest exposure when the cell phone is ringing and we answer the cell phone. It's tremendous exposure. Wi-Fi, we cannot live without Wi-Fi, whether it's 3G, 2.4 gigahertz, 4G, 6 gigahertz, 5G, 28, 39, 60 gigahertz, 60, <gasps> lack of oxygen. Tomorrow, 6G, 300 gigahertz. These are radio waves. Our microwaves are working at those frequencies and they cause all kinds of diseases. In the tunnels, we don't have signal for the Wi-Fi. So really, the tunnels are the safest place on the planet. Now, this uh, lovely lady, 94 years old, she came to the tunnels a couple of weeks back saying, hey, listen, I heard that those tunnels are healing tunnels, that it regenerates. She said, yes. And she said, maybe it even rejuvenates. But we said, maybe. So she went inside for one hour, and then she came back. <laughs> <laughs> so now you know where is your next destination. <laughs> Water. We discovered five tunnels with the water, crystal clear and clean. We've done all kinds of analysis, microbiological, conventional analysis, physical, chemical, and so on. We sent the samples to the Japanese, unfortunately, late scientist, uh, Dr. Masaru Emoto. He became famous when he was freezing different samples of water, and then under the electronic microscope, he was making the photographs. This is the tap water from New York City. This one has no structure whatsoever. This is the water from the dam in Japan. Looks nice, green, but under the microscope, looks bad. This is the water from the Lake Biwa. This is largest freshwater lake in Japan, looking blue from satellite, but it's contaminated. The structure looks real bad. This is the tap water, the city water from the town of Visoko, where the pyramids are located, but city water. City water we can drink. That's what medical establishment is telling us. Why? Because there are no viruses and bacteria. Why? Because it has been treated with the chlorine, which is a poison. In some countries like United Kingdom, 100% of the water has been treated with the fluoride. Fluoride. Until 50 years back, it was exclusively poison for rats. And today, besides the UK, it's Republic of Ireland, it's Australia, it's New Zealand, it is one third of the United States of America. Before we came to Montana, we were in Las Vegas, big difference. Las Vegas, uh, lucky. So, this is the treated water the city water from Visoko in Bosnia. Again, no visible and nice structure. How does the pyramid water look like? Well, we sent samples to Japan. So it went through the airports, all, all those x-rays and machines. But still, the beautiful hexagonal structure remained by hexagonal, the most powerful geometrical structure when it comes to the energies. And beautiful crystal-like structure, like the Christmas trees. When you look at the molecular structure of the pyramid water, you can immediately say this is energetically alive. This is a happy water. This is a high vibrating water. What does that mean, high vibration? You know, Nikola Tesla, Everything is energy, frequency, vibration. We are what we drink. If you drink the spring water, the real spring water, not the bottled water in the plastic bottles, we will vibrate high because that water is still happy. We are what we eat. I won't tell much about the meat here in the state of Montana. We are what we think. 
what we think. The neighbor just bought bigger, better car. Damn, look at this babe. He can afford this, I cannot. We are what we think. We are where we go. They tell us, stay within four concrete walls and look at this magical box and they will tell you, you know, how many diseases, how many deaths, how many wars, how many fires. Or you go to the nature, you listen to the birds and the wind. So we are what we are exposed to. If we are exposed to the bad stuff, we vibrate low. We are stressed, we are jealous, we are violent. Or if we vibrate high, we have the love for the whole world. What is the purpose of our lives? To vibrate high, not to grab, because we will never have enough to vibrate high. And finally, since everybody was attacking me back in 2005, 6, 7, 8, the government was against me, all the archaeologists against me, historians, they were claiming no pyramids. I had to find some ways how to finance the project. I had my business in Houston, but with business you can pay five people, you cannot pay 50 or 80. Today we have 72 people on the payroll, without a penny from the government. So we opened the project for the volunteers. In the last 13 years only, we have had 3,750 volunteers from 64 countries and six continents. They pay for the trip, they pay for the accommodation, which is not much. They work for free and they come back next year and next year and next year in the range from eight years old to 84 years old. Eight years, they have to come with their parents. 84, it's advisable to come with their children. <laughs> so we show them archaeological sites, the pyramids, the tunnels, the beauties of Bosnia. And then we show them our beautiful park and then we give them tools in their hands. <laughs> Let them be productive. And they are helping us clearing the Bosnian period of the sun and the moon and the tumulus and the tunnels. They become part of history. Discovering concrete, concrete blocks, the oldest, the best quality concrete. Discovering the prehistorical tunnels artifacts, organic materials. Sometimes 50, 70 people per shift, sometimes five or 10. Beginning of season is June, then July, August, September, October. They are still working there, helping us a lot, kids. Having fun. We have purchased about 100,000 square meters or 1 million square feet of the swampy, muddy properties close to the tunnels. Transform it into one of the most beautiful parks in Europe. This year only, 2022, we have had 114 schools with the school children sometimes 50, sometimes 100, sometimes 700 school children, teachers, employees. Thursday, they log the school, they come to our place. It's safe, it's free, they have water, they have shed, they have a lot of plays, they have play there, building different installations, geopunctural half circles, Amplifying the energy of the place, the labyrinth of love. We also built three stone circles above underground water flow, putting quartz crystal. You walk clockwise, you expand your auric field for 10 times. We built also the tennis courts, and the best player ever, Novak Djokovic. Open it up July 13. So what we are doing here, concerts, what we are doing here, it's not archaeology anymore. 
Archaeology was followed by science, energy aspect, spiritual aspect, healing aspect. We have become the cultural oasis, concerts, dance, music, book promotions, yoga, recreation, sport, harmony with the nature. We are showing the other way. We offer different concept of future. Not transhumanism, where we're going to serve the technology, but future where technology will still be serving us. When I was younger, in my 20s, I started writing my first books. And in those books, I thought that I already knew everything. I was giving advices to the whole world. Nobody listened. Four decades later, I learned one thing. What we need to do is to change ourselves. Once we do that, we're going to become an example for the others. And then we can change the physical reality around us. Thank you very much.